Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about life cycle of Plasmodium. As you all know, Plasmodium causes disease called malaria. Malaria is a disease that the man has been suffering from many years. Literally, malaria means bad air. Mal means bad, area means air. It is called so because earlier it was believed that malaria is caused by bad air. But later it is discovered that malaria is caused by a protozoan known as Plasmodium. Plasmodium belongs to class Sporozoa. Sir Ronald Rose is the one who received Nobel Prize for discovering the life cycle of Plasmodium. There are mainly four species of Plasmodium that is Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malaria, Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium falciparum. All these four species of Plasmodium causes different types of malaria. Of these four types, Plasmodium falciparum causes malignant malaria which is very dangerous and even it can be fatal also. Plasmodium requires two hosts to complete its life cycle. Such life cycle is called as digenetic. Di means two. So it requires two hosts to complete its life cycle. And the two hosts are man and female Anopheles mosquito. Man is considered as a secondary host or intermediate host. And female Anopheles mosquito is considered as a primary host or definitive host. According to definition, primary host is a one where the sexual reproduction of the parasite takes place and the secondary host is a one where the asexual reproduction of the parasite takes place. So, it is in the female Anopheles mosquito, the sexual reproduction of the parasite takes place, that is why it is primary host and it is in the man, the asexual reproduction of the parasite takes place, that is why it is a secondary host or intermediate host. We will discuss the life cycle of Plasmodium both in man and female Anopheles mosquito. First, we will discuss about the life cycle of Plasmodium in man. As I already told, the asexual reproduction of the parasite takes place in man. And this part of the cycle is known as cycle of Golgi. In man, it takes place in two phases. That is, it takes place in liver and it is known as pre-erythrocytic cycle. And in RBC, it is known as erythrocytic cycle. So, we will discuss it one by one. First one is pre-erythrocytic cycle. This pre-erythrocytic cycle comprises the asexual development of parasite in the liver cell. When the infected female Anopheles mosquito bites a human body, the plasmodium enters human body in the form of a sporozoids. Sporozoids are the infected form of the plasmodium. So they are sickle shaped, slender, highly motile form. After circulating in the bloodstream for about 30 minutes, these sporozoids enter liver cell. In the liver cell, these parasites reproduce by the asexual method known as cytogony to produce cryptomerozoids. So large number of cryptomerozoids are produced by the asexual method. And these cryptomerozoids are set to free into the bloodstream by bursting the liver cell. So that is the pre-erythrocytic cycle and it takes place for about 7 to 17 days. During this pre-erythrocytic cycle, no parasites are found in the blood. So that is about pre-erythrocytic cycle which takes place in the liver which results in the cryptomerozoids. Second phase is erythrocytic cycle. Erythrocytic phase comprises the asexual phase of the parasite in RPC. When the cryptomerozoids are set to free into the bloodstream, they enter RBC, during which the parasite undergo vegetative phase. At this stage, the parasite is called as trophozoids. These trophozoids are tiny amoeba-like form with a very little cytoplasm. Small vacuole appears in that cytoplasm and that vacuole increases in size. As a result, the cytoplasm appears ring-like. At this stage, that parasite is called as signet ring. At this stage, these parasites feeds on the content of the RBC and soon the vacuole disappears. As a result, these parasites fill full interior of the RBC. 
Now that parasite is called as cytosomed. The cytoplasm of the cytosomed consisting of brown color pigment which is known as hemozoin and this hemozoin is formed from the hemoglobin of RBC. Now this cytosomed undergo asexual reproduction known as cytogony to produce merozoids. These merozoids are set free into the bloodstream by bursting of the RBC. Along with the merozoids, the brown color pigment that is hemozoin is also released into bloodstream. Because of the release of this toxic hemozoin, it causes the symptoms of malaria that is chill and fever which reoccur every 3 to 4 days. These merozoids which is released into bloodstream, they again infect the fresh RBC. Some of these merozoids, instead of infecting fresh RBC and forming trophozoids, they form gametocytes. There are mainly two types of gametocytes, that is macrogametocytes or female gametocytes and microgametocytes or male gametocytes. Further development of these gametocytes takes place in the stomach of a female anaphilis mosquito. If not, they will disintegrate. Next is life cycle of plasmodium in female anaphilis mosquito. When the female anaphilis mosquito sucks the blood from the malaria patient, it sucks gametocytes along with the blood. And the further development of gametocytes takes place inside the body of female anaphilis mosquito. The gametocytes develop into gamete and that process is known as gametogony. The macrogametocytes develop into female gamete or macrogamete and the microgametocytes develop into male gamete or microgamete. These formed macrogametes and microgametes unite together to form zygote. The further development of zygote takes place inside the wall of the stomach. This zygote enclose itself in the cyst wall to form oocyst. And these oocyst develops by absorbing the nutrients from the host body. Inside this oocyst, the zygote undergo division to form sporozoids. So large number of sporozoids are formed inside this oocyst. And these sporozoids are slender, sickle shaped, highly motile in nature. Once the oocyst rupture, it releases the sporozoids into the body cavity of female anaphilis mosquito. Since the sporozoids are highly motile, they migrate from the body cavity into the salivary gland. So they pierce the salivary gland and they collect themselves inside the salivary gland. When this mosquito bites a healthy person, these parasites or sporozoids are introduced into that healthy person, thereby it initiates the new cycle. So that is about the life cycle of plasmodium in man as well as in female anaphilis mosquito. I hope this video will be useful. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.